the response from my reviews on your self-tapes has been amazing. (laughs) People from all over the world are taking the time to write how much they get out of these critiques. Okay, well, (laughs) let's do another one. We are going to take Yet another look at another self-submission and find out exactly what it takes to create a successful audition. On this episode of Casting Actors Cast, the podcast and video for actors. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Casting Actors Cast. I'm Jeffrey Dreisbach. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, how did you like the new theme song? I've got some new graphics going on. Uh, A new announcer, Megan Grace Martinez. Uh, She comes from the Terry Schreiber studio. Uh, She's an instructor there as well as a fantastic talent. And so I thought it was time to kind of change things up a bit. We are well over 60,000 downloads of the episodes of Casting Actors Cast. I am so grateful to you for tuning in. Hey, listen, if you'd like to get in on some freebies and some additional stuff, all you have to do is go to the website, castingactorscast.com. That's castingactorscast, all one word, dot com. And there you're going to see a form that says dive into the talent pool. When you do that, that's going to open up another screen where you can get a free book called Conversation Pieces Out of the Studio, the voiceover workshop for professional actors. That's a book I wrote a handful of years ago, all about doing voiceover work. Additionally, there's a video and it's called Casting Director Secrets, What They Don't Want You to Know. (laughs) But you know what I'm going to tell you in this free 20-minute video. Also on the website, you can see my schedule of classes that I'm teaching. Uh, You can see an area where I do a blog called Jeff's Jots. Come on, alliteration, you know. Anyway, Jeff Jots corresponds to each of the episodes, so you can actually have some, some notes that I put together about each episode. A lot of folks are finding that really, really helpful. Finally, I'm going to change some of the uh, logistics of doing these podcasts in that I'm going to be doing some shout outs to those folks who are writing reviews on Apple iTunes, uh, as well as some shout outs to those who have some questions. And so I'm going to sprinkle those in during the episodes just to kind of change it up a bit. Listen, this entire podcast and videos, these patios, are all meant to give you the upper hand, help you feel more comfortable, more confident in the business of show. The only thing that I rely on is your support. Your support in the way of giving me a like, giving me a review, becoming a subscriber. Those are the only things that I ask for. And I invite you to please share with your friends everything you can about jumping in on the talent pool on this podcast. So again, my sincere, deep gratitude to everybody involved. And if you have written in, thank you so much. If you filled out the forms, thank you so much. Uh, Why not send me a question now? Maybe there's something that you have in mind that I could be of help. I've got a whole ton of new podcasts all planned out for you, and I hope that you're going to get a lot out of these. It's been an absolute pleasure for me to bring them to you, and I'm so excited that we were able to grow the community. All right, that's enough kind of talk, 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 talk. (laughs) I want to go ahead and play you the self-submission video that I received from a student, actually. I had this person in a workshop at the University of Washington, and this goes back... Gosh, I think it's almost a year ago now. His name is Michael Michelle, and Michael submitted me a video, and he'd love to get some feedback on it. So I'm just going to repeat what I've said in previous uh, evaluations of your self-tape, and that is that even though you might just be listening to this, you're going to be able to hear Michael Michelle's audition, and then you're going to be able to hear my feedback. And I think the usefulness of that is that even though you might not be able to see what Michael is doing— You'll be able to hear what he's doing, and then you can hear the feedback. So you can still garner, ooh, good word, uh, some technical advice and tips about how to do your self-tapes. Because guess what? Audition on video or self-tape submissions are not going away. Even as the virus is still kind of lingering and dissipating, which we're all grateful for, the reality is, is that we're still getting 
requests for uh, from producers and directors to do self-tapes. So the better you are at putting this together, the better you're going to be. So that's why I continue to do these. And listen, you can submit your self-tape as well. Just go to the email, castingactorscast at gmail.com. That's castingactorscast at gmail.com. And you can literally upload your video or send me a link or ask me a question on the email. All right, so let's go ahead and play Michael Michelle's self-tape. Here we go. Hello, my name is Michael Michelle. I'm an actor based in Dallas, Texas. I stand at six feet tall. Thank you for your consideration. So I was sitting on the bench eating my sandwich and this deer came out of nowhere. He ran out of the woods fast. He ran round in circles. I didn't know what to do. And then he ran into the building, like into the glass pane in my office window. And then he went back and he just <laughs> into the glass again. Like, like he didn't want to be a deer anymore. Like he was tired of being a deer. You want to be a person? You want to send an email? Receive a fax? Do you want to wear pants? You want my life? You want my life? Do you want to know the truth? Do you want to know what I found out while you sat there twisting your little gills, ridden nuts off? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what we do. Because nobody's watching, Phil. Nobody's taking notes. Nobody's heating up a pitchfork. Nobody's there. So don't tell me I'm doing something wrong. I decide that. I decide there's nothing wrong. I'm gonna commit adultery, Phil. I am actually gonna go against the Ten Commandments. And as long as I am careful and I do not get caught, I don't give a shit! Nothing's happening, Phil. Where's the fucking lightning? And we're going to stop there. Wow, Michael, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate you sending this in, and I'm happy to give you some feedback on what I thought um, and give you some impressions. And uh, I'd like to do feedback the following way. First of all, I want you to know I haven't seen this. I haven't looked at it. I haven't taken notes on it. What I have done is just played it live for you so that the feedback I'm giving you is instantaneous. It doesn't give me a lot of time to think about, you know, just um, feeling like a teacher and giving you instruction. It's much more visceral than that, that I can give you feedback based upon my experience in the moment. So that's what I'm about to give you. Now, the way I like to give feedback is to divide it into two separate parts. First, the technical elements, followed by the acting elements. In that way, I hope to stress that that although the technical elements are really, really important and can up your game, all of the technical notes that I might be giving you are there to help support your excellent acting. So that's really important. It's about your acting that we need to focus and concentrate on and not the technical elements. So the technical idea is to put together your setup, get your background, your lighting, your sound, all of those things that are really, really important to a good self-tape. And then once you know what the setup is, you forget about it so that you can spend the most time and the most energy on delivering a really good audition. And then the only other disclaimer now that I'm thinking about it, is that if the casting director or whoever is asking you to submit a video has specific instructions about what they want to see, then it's important that you follow what their request is as the default setting when you're submitting a video. 
So what suggestions I make might not necessarily jibe with those who have specific ideas or instructions about what they're looking for. Um, and the first thing we're going to talk about um, are those technical elements. And so um, the acting elements will come after that. So first of all, so Michael, let's talk about your audition. Uh, the camera frame is really, really good. It is a slight cutting off at the top of your head, but I do like the physicality that you bring to it, the movement. It's not necessary that you have to freeze in one place for your audition. And the fact that you had some physicality going on, I thought was really helpful, really, really beneficial. Um, number two, I think lighting is a little bit of an issue. Uh, the reason is, is that I can see that you have a ring light. Now, ring lights in and of themselves are not a problem. The problem is, is that when you put your cell phone in the middle of the ring light, like everyone is doing, you end up getting a ring in your eyes. And that means I have a difficult time seeing your acting 100% because the eyes are being sort of ringed out. And I need to see your eyes. I need to see you focusing on the significant other. And the ring light just takes me out of watching you. My suggestion is, is that you certainly can use the ring light as a light source, but I suggest putting it at about 45 degree angle from where your camera lens is away from the camera so that it is not ref reflecting, reflecting, wow, <laughs> so that it is not reflecting directly into your eyes. The harshness uh, of the light itself, the lumens of the light, also cast a little bit of a shadow on the background. And there are two fixes for that. One is, I'd love for you to stand just one step further downstage of your backdrop. Now, I know you had some movement in your work, and like I said, I really thought that was effective, really nice. But I did think that if you had started off just one foot downstage, pulled the camera back a little bit more, if you can, then you're going to reduce some of those shadows on your background. Because of the harshness of the light, my tip has always been just a piece of parchment paper that you can put over whatever light source that you want. You can use a staple or binder clips. Whatever you want, but parchment paper, the white parchment paper, by the way, I know they make a brown color like a paper bag color. I'm talking about white parchment paper is a fantastic light diffuser and will not be adversely affected because it has been treated so that it is not... It doesn't turn brown, for example, or become brittle over time. So it's a really great light deflector. You might want to play around with the lighting just a little bit. I thought that the sound, moving on from the lighting part of it, the sound was okay for the first piece. I thought it was, um, I could hear you very, very clearly. I know that many times we're relying on our device sound, and that's why I always recommend a lavalier microphone, but I will say that the sound was quite good for the first piece. But you know what? The problem with the second piece is because you are vocally, um, you're yelling, you're very loud in the piece, sometimes that over-modulates. What's the technical term is called over-modulating, and that means that it's so loud that it's sort of virtually pinning the needles to the point of distortion. And because you had some lows and some highs, I suggest that, and for future reference, that you play a little bit more aggressively with the quality of the sound that you're producing. Um, and it really is okay to be yelling in the scene. I don't mind that as much. But it does really mean that you have to play around with some of those choices so that you can determine what is the best choice for the level of your sound. Uh, on a positive note, and by the way, when I say nice things to you, Michael, um, please don't dismiss them. It's not just about critiquing or being, you know, negatively critiquing some of your uh, work. That's not what I'm here for. I really want to talk about what you do extremely well. And one is you had a really good cross fade into the scene from the slate. So crossfading is the only transition that any actor needs when they're going from the slate into the audition or going from one audition requested piece to the, ne to the next. By all means, really clearly, um, it's um, uh, the, the transition of a fade or crossfade is ideal. 
Um, I also noticed, uh, now moving on from that, a little bit of upspeak in your name. And I've talked about this on occasion, and that is a lot of actors now, especially younger actors, are using upspeak. And what I mean by upspeak is they're saying their name and ending musically on an up note. So, for example, I would the upspeak that I would use would say, Hi, I'm Jeff Dreisbach. As opposed to the better, more correct way, which is, Hi, I'm Jeff Dreisbach. You see, the upspeak is sending a subliminal, insecure statement. So if you use your name as uh, in upspeak, I suggest you work on saying your name in a slate as a statement of fact. After all, you should know who you are by now. If it sounds like a question, it's not really uh, signaling or sending the right message. I think it's really grounding for you to say your name in a grounding way. I hope that that makes sense. Um, also, I'm a big fan of a an end card or a closing card at the end. Now, you didn't have that, and that's fine. I, you know, it's not a big deal. However, when you have some kind of a graphic at the top or you're doing a live slate, that's great, and I'm so glad you included your height. But when you're finishing your video, a closing card like a thank you or thank you for watching or just your headshot with your graphics, which include uh, your contact information, maybe it includes your phone number, that would really make for a nice bookend on any submission. I kind of like the idea of ending on that last beat, that last note, and then doing a crossfade into the end card, either thanking me or I, I appreciate you watching or just your name with your headshot, because I think that's a great uh, strategy uh, for branding. Um, so uh, you might want to consider for future reference some kind of an end beat, an end moment in terms of your graphics. Finally, uh, this is on the technical note. The frame of reference that you had for the significant other in your scene was slightly up out of the lens of the camera, I noticed. And so people always talk about eye line. And eye line in this case means that you are looking on the same level, if not slightly, and I'm talking only slightly, down below the lens line. In that way, you don't have to diminish your acting because you're looking up as if you're uh, more, ooh, here's a good word, diminutive. It really puts you on an equal plane in your acting because you know what? That's how the scene is gonna get shot when you book the job. So why not try to replicate that as much as possible? I appreciated you being slightly off center in the shot as well. All right, now let's talk a little bit about the performance elements. But before that, we're going to do a quick shout out. I love to do little uh, review shout outs. And so we're going to come back right after this and talk about Michael's performing elements. And now it's time for this week's shout outs. Today's review shout out goes to Q P H F S. <laughs> I, you know, I can't sort of say these names, so I'm just going to use their letters that they've left on the podcast. And this is from an iTunes. Um, and great teacher exclamation point. I've had the pleasure of working with Jeffrey in person, and he's just as honest, genuine, and generous as he is on his show. The podcast is highly useful and a pleasure to listen to. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. I appreciate that so much. Perhaps you might want to consider leaving a review or a comment. You might be the next shout out. Thanks. Great. Thank you for that. So performing elements. So why does this matter the most? Well, it's because that's what we're there to evaluate. We have to decide if you are in keeping with the vision of how we need to cast the role. So if I see the performer performing and not playing the character, that's difficult. If I see a presentation, in other words, then that becomes harder for me to decide whether or not you're gonna be right for the role. So some of these performance elements, I think are um, really, really useful and, and really must have a little more time spent on them. And I'm not talking about Michael specifically, I'm just talking in general. But let's talk about Michael specifically. First of all, I thought that the slate was a little rushed. 
The slate is an opportunity to not only introduce the information that you're introducing, like the material and your height and where you're from, all those are fine, but when it feels like it's an afterthought or a rushed moment, it really puts me in a different frame of reference. Think of a slate as an opportunity to really make an impact to the person that you're introducing yourself to. Taking the time. Don't just blow it off as a necessary cataloging device for your video. Think of it as a moment to really introduce yourself sincerely to somebody and giving me a little bit more information about who you are and your personality just by saying your name and providing the information. The second thing I thought for performance-wise is really important to focus on the other character. And you can use the other character. I know they're not there and it's hard to sort of visualize, but that's the actor's job, especially in self-tape, to really visualize the other character. And there are moments in both of those pieces that you did, Michael, that warranted some kind of response from the other. And to build in a beat so that you can register whether what you are saying is, is, is happening or not. So don't forget to really use the other character in your imagination to make it feel more like a dialogue and not like a monologue. Secondly, I want you to vary the intensity of the character to reflect the importance of his emotions. We don't just go from being... Um, angry and then loud. We go from really revving up to getting to a particular place of our emotional uh, vocabulary. And so if you can vary the intensity just a little bit more, I get to see some more of how the character is working. If I can see the, the behind the eyes, what's taking place, um, then I think you're in a much better place. So don't be afraid of taking your time of letting the other register, but also let that emotional uh, impact of the response you're getting drive the emotion of the character. Um, number four, I think this is an excellent use of space. I, I really like the fact that I could see you physically. And you know what? Uh, number five, you look great on camera, Michael. You really do. You have a really nice on-camera presence and a nice energy. And I, I can tell that you are a well-trained actor. So that really works well for you. And finally, I just love the spontaneous moments and choices that you make throughout both of these pieces that you demonstrate. So this is a really, really good audition. I guess what I'm saying is just a cleanup of a few of those technical things and really just staying committed and raising the stakes for the character each time you do those pieces, especially if you're do, doing them a lot, right? If, you're, if you've done the same monologue over and over again, it's time to change up the monologue. But if it's fresh for you and spontaneous for you, then it's brilliant for us to experience as a viewer, watcher. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing because I don't know if you can hear my dog is sound asleep and snoring so loud. It's like, wow, I hope that that isn't the audience. <laughs> the dog is allowed to do it, but not my audience. Finally, overthinking produces overreactions. Let me repeat that. Overthinking produces over reaction. So keeping the choices simple actually frame the character's sense of self and therefore that character's intelligence. Does that make sense? Gosh, I hope it does. The uniqueness of the choices reflect your own uniqueness as an actor. Remember that the technical side of your self-tape auditions are there to keep the viewer focused on your good acting. I hope that this has been helpful for you. Come on back next time for the next episode of Casting Actors Cast. Thank you for joining Casting Actors Cast. Please don't forget to review, like, and share Casting Actors Cast wherever you get your patios, podcast videos. Thanks. I'm Megan Grace Martinez. 